Our next speaker is John Dovey from React and Pervasive Media Studio. Afternoon. This is going to be the most radical presentation you hear all day because it has no images. There is no PowerPoint. Just me and some words. My name is John Dovey and I'm a professor of screen media. And I have one of the best jobs in the world because I'm privileged to work alongside Verity McIntosh in the Pervasive Media Studio in Bristol. Or I head up something called React, which is uh, a creative economy hub that makes projects between uh, academics and creative businesses. So we dream, dream up extremely challenging and wacky briefs and then give people money to go off and have fun producing prototypes in digital innovation. But what I want to talk to you today is some research that I'm involved with that's come out of that project. So I want to talk to you about the idea of ambient literature. I'll tell you, tell you a story to start with. It's five years ago, a spring evening early on, just at that magic hour between dusk and uh, daylight. And I'm standing in the middle of the center of Bristol with a bike. And I'm leaning against the bike and I'm listening to some audio that's coming from a GPS device that uses, uh, the, that's attached to the handlebars. And I suddenly find myself starting to cry. I'm listening to a, a clip that's an exchange between a father and a son. And as I reflect on the experience, I realize that actually, of course, uh, my dad's really sick and he's probably dying. And uh, I'm listening to somebody else, a father and a son talk, and it, it gives me a moment, a real moment, a profound moment of coalescence when all the stuff in the city and in my life and the swirl of the day and everything just comes together in a moment, an encounter with some content that is profoundly moving for me and holds me. And I've been manipulated by the artistry of Blast Theory in their piece, Riders Spoke, and the voice of Juro Farr, their chief dramaturg, to this point where I'm having to reflect upon mortality, my life, coming and going in the city, the whole damn thing in this one moment at dusk in Bristol, in the center of town five years ago with my bike. And I'm interested in thinking about those kinds of experiences. I'm interested in the idea of ambient literature. Data flow fills the city. We are full of humans and goods, traffic, but also data. The, the city is made up from data. I'm interested in what happens when that data starts to uh, think of itself as literature. There's a great book on this subject called Ambient Commons by a man called Malcolm McCulloch, who's a professor from America. If you don't know uh, Malcolm McCulloch, Ambient Commons, it's a great book. And he asks a key question. When he's talking about technology in the city, he says, I want to explore the question, do increasingly situated information technologies illuminate the world or do they just eclipse it? There are technologies that we madly phone, thumb twitching around the city, listening to our music, doing all the stuff. How do we use that stuff to connect with one another and with the place that we're in and with ourselves rather than screen ourselves out of the reality that we inhabit? That's the key question. The data that forms the city, thinks of itself, or is described as content, the stuff that drops down from the Zeppelin, sometimes narrative, sometimes media, but rarely a story or poetry or drama. And I'm really interested in thinking about what happens when story and poetry and drama get into that space and what do they do. There's a few precedents. Some of you might think of things that you've read, things that books, stories that you know, there's a whole literature of psychogeography. There are writers like W.G. Seabold. Anybody here read W.G. Seabold? Yes, there's a man at the back who knows who W.G. Seabold is. Fantastic. W.G. Seabold is a fantastic writer about places and cities and walking and has these amazing moments in his books where everything comes together and people understand their life in the city through the chaos and the complexity and these moments of the poetic. So I recommend W.G. Seabold to you. But my main mentor in thinking about all of this is a guy called Duncan Speakman and his company Circumstance. And he really should be here at this event today. Duncan's really my inspiration for thinking about this. Any of you come across Duncan Speakman's company Circumstance? Yeah, one of you here? Okay, one of you, the, uh, only the Bristol crew, okay. Um, Duncan's based in Brussels most of the time now. He has a company called Circumstance. Duncan is the inventor of, of the idea of the subtle mob. So it's taking the carnival down a register, it's saying stay invisible, stay part of the city, stay aware, be connected to where you are, but you don't have to make yourself into a party to do that. And Duncan's work uh, is concerned with uh, producing audio experiences, musical experiences and film experiences. He uses all of those different media mixed into actually creating 
performance-based model, models, in other words, you pay for a ticket, you rock up, you register, you do the thing, it takes you a couple of hours, you have an experience. Um, but he's interested now in extending that into literature. And he says, um, what we try to do, these are Duncan's words, wherever you are, Duncan, thank you. What, what we try to do is about not pretending that you can make something more exciting than the world that's already there. It's about realizing that the world that's there might be great, and if you can frame it or make people look at it in a certain way, then you get to still be an author, you still get to structure people's experience. With circumstance stuff in general, we've always said we try and leave space for the world to happen. We try and leave space for the world to happen. We've always designed for emergent things by saying, here's our frame, and the frame is fixed, and what you see, experience here, feel within that frame, just becomes part of the work. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. So you can design a frame for your work that accommodates the world as it happens and as it unfolds. And of course, the thing that you understand when you start to experience a work like that, or when you write a work like that, is that as the world unfolds, so you unfold as a human being. So you have an experience where you meet the world and it's unfolding, and you have a, a, an encounter, which I take to be one of the functions of art. So I want to think about ambient literature and how we produce those kinds of experiences in the world. Okay.